Welcome to Dewey More, I'm Erica Cardenas. The month of March brings us the promise of gardening and warmer sunny days. Plus, it's a time our nation celebrates and observes women through the recognition of American history, which helps shape our families, economy, and nation. Women's History Month originally started as a single day celebration, then it turned into a week celebration. And by March 1987, Congress officially declared March as Women History Month. Why March, you might ask? Well, March holds a few important milestones for women's history. For example, in March of 1972, laws were passed which prohibit sex discrimination in federal educational programs and also the end of legal distinctions between men and women in matters of divorce, property, employment, and other matters. We traveled to San Diego, California to visit an organization helping individuals, families, and veterans transition from homelessness into a home founded by empowering women. Humble Design is a nonprofit group that uh, was first organized in Detroit and is now spreading nationwide. And they came to San Diego last summer. And their goal is to help homeless people transition from shelters into homes. This is the third home that La Jolla Cosmetic Surgery Center has sponsored. And in each instance, the reaction was very similar, which was that people said they felt humbled by participating and that it gave them perspective and a sense of a way to help in really a short space of time. You're talking about five hours as a volunteer to make this huge difference for these families. Again, remember the journey from from homelessness and from the shelter to the empty apartment or home. And now they're coming home and they enter for the first time and they see their life as they haven't seen it perhaps ever or certainly in many years. And it's an honor to be able to witness that. And anyone who's watching this who wants to know what that is like I suggest you go to humbledesign.org and look at the videos of the dozens of homes that um, have been done around the country. And I think you'll be like us, which is you'll want to call and you'll want to help. I choked up during this application process. I had to fight back tears. I had to go take a drink of water. They find out what you want deep in your heart and then they try to, they, they make every attempt to give that to you. Being involved with Humble Design is really easy and simple. Just go on our website at humbledesign.org and fill out the volunteer form. Once you do that, we'll let you know what opportunities are in your city. You can either decorate a home for a family who has left a homeless shelter, or organize the warehouse, or come down with all of your employees to help us decorate together. If there's only one thing that people need to know about helping the homeless, I would say that everything that you give to them, you will receive back you will go away with a sense of well-being and happiness for what you've helped to do and they go forward um, in a much more secure way and a way for their family to truly have joy. All of you, all of you, amazing, wonderful work, wonderful. You've changed my life. I can bring my kids here and everybody who doubted me, they can come here and just be like, you know, Michael has a home, that's right. Humble Design couldn't function without the dedication and help of their volunteers and generous donations. They aim to build a creative network of individuals who are committed to work toward those affected by homelessness. As we go to break in honor of Women's History Month, we celebrate the life of Anne Cox Chambers, daughter of Cox Enterprises founder, James Cox. Her passion for business and philanthropy lives on through the many endeavors she touched. I'll be right back with more on Doing More right after this. Doing More proudly honors the life of Ann Cox Chambers, philanthropist, diplomat, community leader, and Cox Enterprise board member, for whom giving back was a passion. Welcome back to Doing More. We're here at Cox Studios recognizing the achievements and accomplishments of women throughout history during Women's History Month. 
Women have been a major contributor to our society from business entrepreneurship, government, science, education, and the arts, just to name a few. One of these women we are celebrating is Susan B. Anthony, an American women's right activist who played a pivotal role in the women's suffrage movement. Committed to social equality, Susan collected anti-slavery petitions at age 17, making a positive impact on society. Now let's take a look at an expedition event where youth and families learned about the Sonoran Desert. Welcome to the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy's 2020 Expedition Days, taking place in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve in Scottsdale. The preserve is the largest urban land preserve in North America, so come out and join us. My name is Justin Owen, and I am the Executive Director of the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. This event is of great importance for our education programs because we're not only educating youth from around Scottsdale, but also from around the valley. Over the last two days, we were able to bring out over 650 Title I third and fourth graders from across the valley to teach them about science and our environment. One of the great things about our public day is it gives an opportunity for families and youth to come out and learn about how they can save our environment and how they can learn to live in the Sonoran Desert and complement where they live. Our volunteers are absolutely amazing. We have over 650 volunteers with the organization that help us every single day, but it takes over 150 to put on our Expedition Days event. Cox's partnership is 100% invaluable for us being able to do this. For our elementary school days that we bring the students out, it is no cost to any of the students or teachers to be here, and that's only possible because of our amazing supporters like Cox. The reason these events are important to the preserve is the City of Scottsdale and the Conservancy work in a unique partnership. The City of Scottsdale has purchased 30,000 acres in perpetuity. If this thing exists by itself and nobody comes out here, it's an unknown treasure. The Conservancy advocates for the exploration of these 30,000 acres. This is so important because we've got the future of conservation at our fingertips. These kids come out here, they're excited, they're, they're just enraptured by the experience. They're seeing things that they haven't seen, or at least for the first time. That's the next generation. That's the sustainability of, of, of these wild and open spaces rests and relies upon the next generation taking up the uh, flag, so to speak, and, and advocating for the preservation and things like this. It's, it's an incredible, important thing to do, to educate the youth, to get the next part of activism involved. Um, so I think it's fundamental in, in the future. Throughout the year, the Conservancy has over 150 free events, everything from hikes to our Expedition Days Festival to the Arizona Children's Learning and Play Festival coming up this fall. They're all free to the public, and anyone can come out and participate in anything we're doing. You can come out and enjoy the preserve, enjoy the recreation, and learn. Thank you for joining us today out in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve. Feel free to visit us at the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy anytime for some fun and learning. We also traveled to New England to visit a foundation that's committed to embrace young leaders and provide them with tools to reach their full potential. Take a look. Hello, 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 my great guys. I love you guys. My name is Alan Sean Feinstein, and I'm the founder of the Feinstein Foundation. Feinstein Foundation was established to make youngsters feel they were special and make them do things to reach out to help other people. Had made a great deal of money in the business world. I started a financial newsletter, and the fact that I was an international columnist gave me quite a bit of heft, but I really wanted to do something for children. Feinstein Leadership Schools, I think there are 176 now, and they're schools that really pledge to make junior scholars, to encourage their youngsters to reach out and do good deeds for others. We supply them with journals for the youngsters, because when they apply to college, 
and they get a leg up on our scholarship money. Math was always my strong suit and I enjoyed it, so I just wanted to help fellow students and I did that for a few years in high school. So one of the high school guidance counselors came to me about the Lewis Feinstein Memorial Scholarship and it was for people who were doing some kind of public service, which I was doing the tutoring, and people who were going into the public service field. So I was going to be an educator and I always tell my students that when Mr. Feinstein comes to visit that it's because of him that I am able to do what I can do. This is our treasure the children that we are going to leave behind us. And I have been privileged to play such a role in their young lives. See you later, alligator. Every time you do something that makes somebody smile, you make the world a better place, and that makes you a very special person. As of 2019, over 250,000 children have been recognized as Feinstein Junior Scholars for promising to do good deeds for others. We'll be right back. A generous philanthropist, Ann Cox Chambers supported numerous community and arts organizations, including Atlanta's High Museum of Art, where a wing is named in her honor. Welcome back to Doing More, we shine light on the good things happening in our communities. We're here at Cox Studios recognizing the accomplishments of women trailblazers during Women's History Month. We also celebrate Dolores Huerta, a Mexican-American labor leader and a 1950s civil activist. Dolores founded the United Farm Workers alongside Cesar Chavez and continued advocacy for the rights of immigrants, agricultural workers, and women. Plus, we celebrate Michelle LeVon Robinson Obama, who's an American lawyer, university administrator, writer, and who is the first lady of the United States from 2009 to 2017. She's married to the 44th president of the United States, Barack Obama, and was the first African-American first lady of the U.S. Check out an organization founded by mothers designed to tackle important youth issues and designed to empower children. At MASK, Mothers Awareness on School-Age Kids, our mission is to engage and educate both parents, children, and the community on any issues facing children. So whether it's bullying or internet safety, self-esteem, current drug and alcohol trends, we want to educate parents and children and empower children to make safe, healthy choices. We engage, educate, and empower parents and children in a few different ways. Number one, we have the Mask E3 Institute. That's a prevention program that runs digitally in schools. We have the Mask Magazine, which is a parenting magazine, a quarterly magazine that can go home with every student that attends our program and also parents can just subscribe to learn. And then we also do some fundraising at Mask. The Masquerade Ball happens every fall and that is a black tie event that happens at the Fairmont Scottsdale Princess. We couldn't accomplish our mission at MASK without the help of partners, and we are so grateful and so thankful for wonderful partners like the Fairmont Scottsdale Princess and Cox Communications. The Fairmont Scottsdale Princess has been a partner with us, helping us execute our Masquerade Ball every year. We've been a sponsor of the Masquerade Ball uh, for years, and each year they have a great theme. This year's is October 12th, and they'll be bringing incredible entertainment. That community partnership we have with Mass is perfect for the family entertainment that we offer here at the resort. It is really an incredible synergy and a relationship we treasure. Cox has a continued commitment to the communities we serve, and Cox Charities supports Arizona nonprofits that are focused on K-12 youth and education programs. Cox looks for those key community partners that can help us deliver on those key focus areas, and MASK is one of those organizations that we are proud to support. Cox has had a long-standing relationship with the Fairmont Scottsdale Princess, and we are proud to support this summer getaway that will benefit Cox Charities and MASK. In turn, a portion of the proceeds will benefit MASK, which will help raise awareness for the issues our youth face today and help empower parents and children make safe, healthier choices. If we can empower families and children, what a great place this will be for all of us as kids grow and they can tackle the challenges that are out there. 
and the community will be stronger in the end. And if we all come together, these partners like the Fairmont, like Cox Communications, to help us come together and strengthen our community, we're strengthening families. While in California, we also visited a conservancy located in the city of Escondido, helping humans and nature prosper together. Take a look. Traditional conservation groups tend to remove humans from the conservation equation. Humans live in ecosystems, and in a lot of cases, humans have the power and the control to help conserve ecosystems. So we have two major program areas that we focus on. One is we build fuel-efficient stoves in developing countries, and the other is we're designing and building aquaponics systems here in the United States. What we at Ecolife Conservation hope to communicate through aquaponics is that there are alternatives to growing food that would greatly reduce the impact modern agriculture is having on the planet. With aquaponics, we can grow a wide variety of fish and plants using a fraction of the resources. Inside this fish tank live 120 Mozambique tilapia. The waste that they produce will be converted into a natural fertilizer for our plants. The plants, in turn, will take up that fish waste and purify the water for the fish. The synergistic relationship between fish and plants is what makes aquaponics such an efficient means of growing our food. So we are constantly working to increase food access in our community. The biointensive nature of aquaponics allows us to plant these plants a lot closer together, which enables them to share all of the nutrients in the system. Our plants are growing directly into the water, which prevents them from becoming root bound as they may become in the soil. We're also not losing any water through evaporation or seeping into soil. This is our EcoCycle Aquaponics Kit, which is a great tool for demonstrating a variety of things to students in a living learning laboratory. We can talk about nutrient cycling, chemistry, ecology, all in one hands-on system. We're also distributing our aquaponics kits to classrooms all over the United States. With our stove program, three billion people around the world cook on open fires, either in their homes or outside of their homes. It's like having a, a campfire in your kitchen. As you can imagine, it poses a whole host of threats to the family. These fires are extremely inefficient and contribute widely to deforestation around the world. And so we come in with a stove that is culturally appropriate and safe to the family that reduces fuel wood use by up to 60% or more. We're building these stoves around the Monarch Butterfly Biosphere Reserve in Mexico to protect butterfly habitat. The monarch butterflies migrate all the way from Canada to central Mexico where they spend the winter. And if those forests are degraded or destroyed, there's nowhere for the butterflies to spend the winter. So these stoves help protect butterflies by reducing fuel wood harvest in those forests where the butterflies live. And if we can revolutionize the way that we're growing, distributing, and cooking our food, we can all play a huge part in making the planet a more sustainable place to live for us, for our children, and for our grandchildren. Ego Life Conservation is committed to empower communities to be self-sufficient, increase individual prosperity, and protect our natural resources. What a great way of doing more. We'll be right back. Daughter of Ohio Governor James Cox, Ann Cox Chambers shared her father's interest in politics, serving as U.S. Ambassador to Belgium under President Jimmy Carter. A Cox board member and chairman of Atlanta Newspapers, Ann Cox Chambers was also the first woman on the board of Central Atlanta Progress and the Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back to Doing More. We're here in Cox Studios celebrating Women's History Month. Our final stop was Las Vegas, where we had a chance to visit the Cox Team Steam Lab. Take a look. I was super excited to come out here today to open up the new Cox Teen Steam Lab, which is the first one of its kind here in Las Vegas at the Enterprise Library. We just did the grand opening and I'm really excited to get in here and see what all the teenagers of Las Vegas have to offer with all the tools we just provided them. The Cox Teen Steam Lab is an amazing space made possible with a very generous grant from the Cox Charities to the Library Foundation. And the Las Vegas Clark County Library District has situated it here in the Enterprise Library, which is a really amazing neighborhood full of 
uh, families with children who are moving from being tweens to teens and we're really excited about the kind of teens that we're going to see here and the experiences that we're going to be able to bring them as they find the kinds of technologies that are really shaping the world around them. This is really a step up in technology with 3D printing. They're going to be able to look at a knitting tool. They're going to be able to make movies. They're going to be able to get super creative and build skills that, again, they probably didn't even know they had. It was really cool getting to see all of this, the IMAX, the cameras, the 3D printer, making the, the, making the trailer for the iMovie, and it was just all super cool and really great. All these new computers, these 3D printers, piano, even the Raspberry Pi here, which is one of just the many tech pieces of technology that we have here, which I think is amazing because as our world's evolving, technology is evolving, and I think it's important that everyone here learns and understands how the technology works, especially at a young age. The Team Tech Lab actually is an innovation model service for the library district, and we believe that we are leading the nation in this service innovation because as we started looking at the future of learning and the future of work, there was so much overlap in terms of this gap, this disparity between what youth experience and what they um, and what they can actually do out in the real world. And we want to be sure that they get the access to the technologies as well as a place to really move to mastery so that when they go out and look for their first job or start really pursuing their careers through certifications or higher education, that they have had some experiences that really spark them to go to the next level. I just appreciate all the things that Cox has really done, not just for the library, but just for the kids and everybody who goes here. At Cox, we want to be able to connect folks of all ages to things that matter the most to them. And that makes me feel, as the mother of children, that I know that you've got kids that are in a safe place, that are building skills and developing a friendship, and that just really warms my heart. We want to thank you for celebrating Women's History Month with us. Throughout American history, women have played pivotal roles in the building and development of our country. The participation and contributions of women has been an important ingredient in achieving an equitable, peaceful, and more prosperous society. Despite significant obstacles, women have broken barriers, changed laws, and orchestrated some of the most powerful movements in history. And so to all the mothers, daughters, and sisters, happy Women's History Month. I'm Erica Cardenas. See you next time.